Hello and welcome to this morning's sermon, this morning's Bible teaching today here at the King's Church in Wisbeach. Um, today I'm going to be continuing our new sermon series that Mike started for us last weekend, um, all about um, a book in the Bible called Philippians. So this is Paul writing a letter to the church in Philippi. Now, Mike gave an excellent introduction to the book of Philippians last time, putting things in context, sort of setting the scene um, for why the book was written, who it was for, who it was from, all that sort of thing. So do go back and find a last week's sermon by Mike um, called God at Work. You'll find that on our church um, YouTube channel, as well as on our church website, kingswisbeach.org. UK. So do go check that out because I'm not going to be going over the same ground again. I'm going to be moving on. So today I'm going to be looking at the next part of the first chapter in the book of Philippians. So Philippians are chapter 1 and I am going to be looking at verses 3 to 8. And the title of my sermon today is called Growing in Christ. All right. So, the first verse from that passage that I want to zoom in on is verse 6, which says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So, began a good work. Well, what is this good work? that Paul is talking about here. I interpret that to mean growth, the, the process um, in our lives where we become more like Jesus, where we become more Christ-like. Or another way of putting it is discipleship, that process by which we grow in our faith and um, becoming more like Jesus as his disciples, as his followers. So, he who began a good work in you. He's writing to a church in Philippi. And so he knows that God has started something here. He knows that people have begun a relationship with Jesus. And here Paul is saying that this good work, this growth, has had a beginning. And I just want to talk briefly a bit today about growth is an important part of Christian life. I'm always wary of when I meet people and they, they come across as unteachable or they come across as I know everything and you know nothing. I don't have anything left to learn because I know it all but you know I've, I've really got something that I could teach you a thing or two. I'm always wary of people like that because, you know what, in God, in Christ, there is always more to learn. There is always more to learn. And part of the Christian life is a continual growth, a continual growing. And you know what, we should all be growing, whether we met Jesus yesterday or whether we, um, you know, became a Christian, you know, decades ago, we should all still be growing. And having that as one of our foremost things in our life of discipleship, in our, in our, in our desire to become more like Jesus, you know what? Change me, Jesus. Make me more like you. Growth is important. I sometimes... Well, I'll use this analogy. Um, growth is kind of like marriage in a way. Um, when we think about weddings, weddings are such a big deal, especially these days, but they always have been. But these days you get all sorts of TV programs about weddings, don't you? Um, you get things about wedding dresses, like say yes to the dress. Um, you got about the day itself. Um, like, don't tell the bride. And you've also got um, other shows all about just the wedding cake and how the cake is baked and decorated to perfection and, 
and, and we watch these programs and we think, wow, the wedding day is so amazing. There's magazines and all sorts of stuff about weddings. Now, some people get it out of balance and they think that the wedding day is the huge main major event of their entire relationship. That the wedding day is the pinnacle. The wedding day is the top of the mountain. And they sadly miss the fact that the wedding day is just the beginning. It's just the start of a life together of building and doing life together. Yes, it's a great party and a fantastic celebration and, you know, let, let's have fun and, and, and celebrate together in that way. That's absolutely fine. But let's not make the wedding day the pinnacle of a relationship. Because it isn't. It's, it's, it's a marker along the path, but it's not the final destination. There's still a whole life yet to live beyond the wedding day. And the same is true for us as Christians. When we think of salvation, so often we talk about salvation, we pray that people will be saved, we do courses about salvation, we do courses about evangelism, which is hopefully going to lead people to salvation. We kind of get this idea that salvation is the pinnacle. Salvation, yeah, coming to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior and following him and, and getting to know Jesus, you know, be, being saved, that is the ultimate goal. Well, it's important. It's an important marker along the pathway of someone's life and of someone's faith. But it's not the pinnacle. It's not the final destination. In fact, just like a wedding, salvation is just the beginning. It's just the start of someone's relationship with Jesus, coming to know him and growing to become and changing to become more like him. So let's put things in the correct order and see things from the correct perspective. These things are beginning. And why is it beginning? Because our relationship with Jesus and the relationship between um, um, a husband and wife, yes, it has a start, but it needs to grow from that starting place. It needs to continue to grow and as you live life together you grow together yes things change things move but you're growing all the time learning things about each other along the way and that should be the same for us with our relationship with Jesus getting to know each other growing together learning more about each other along the way so this growth then I think there's another misconception about growth, that, that it's all to do with my effort and how hard I try at growing. We can give perfect, you know, a church can try its best to, to sort of give the right environment for growth to happen, um, provide the right materials. But part, part so the first thing I want you to understand, and I need to understand as well, is that Growth kind of relies on our willingness to grow. We've kind of got to be on the same page with God. If God says, you know what, that needs to change, but well, we need to be willing to say, okay, I'll, I'll have a go at changing that. Well, you know, that, you need to start doing that more. Well, okay, God, I'll be obedient and I'll start doing that more. We need to kind of be on the same page. We've got to be willing to grow. And it's not the church's fault if we are not growing. It's our fault. We need to take personal responsibility for our growth as Christians. Now, having said that, it's not all about how much muscle do I need to use? How much energy do I need to muster up? And, you know, let me, let me sit on this chair and... I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow, I'm going to grow, 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 grow. Oh, I activate my faith and now measure myself. Have I grown? Oh, no, I haven't. Okay, well, what's that about? It's not about us trying to muster up 
the energies to force ourselves to grow. It's not about that. Let me give you another illustration. So I was a primary school teacher for many, many years. And one of the, the things in the curriculum that no teacher particularly enjoys teaching because it is very embarrassing is um, SRE, Sex and Relationships Education. And one of the things I would say in that talk, um, because it's, it's usually all about puberty and what starts happening and the changes that start happening at puberty um, was the kind of year group that I was dealing with. And puberty is all about growth, okay? And lots of, some, sometimes the children will say, well, what does it feel like? And you say, well, you know what? It doesn't really feel like anything. Growth just happens naturally. And growth also happens gradually. I gave an example. I said, you know, it's like you don't all of a sudden have a huge big sneeze and all of a sudden you've got arm hair growing under your armpit. That, that's not how it works. Just like the hair on our heads or, or how we've grown from when we were babies to, to, you know, where we are now. You know, even, even putting on weight. You don't feel the weight being added to you. You just kind of wake up one morning and look in the mirror and go, Oh, I've put on a bit of weight. I didn't feel it happening. I didn't, you know, I didn't muster up the energy and strength and like, Oh, I need to put on weight today. How much weight have I put on because I've put my mind to it? No, it doesn't work like that. Growth happens naturally and gradually. So we can't make growth happen. But just as our bodies grow, in a similar way, we need to, for our bodies to grow nicely, for our bodies to grow properly and healthily, we need to keep living in a healthy way. We need to eat healthy food. We need to have a good amount of exercise. And growth will then happen gradually and naturally. Same spiritually. We need to keep our spirit healthy. Praying, having fellowship with other Christians, reading the Bible, communicating with Jesus. And then our spiritual growth will happen naturally. It is not us that makes us grow. It is the Holy Spirit. He does the growing in us. And if we look at the start of this verse that I'm looking at now, he who began a good work in you. He. So it's the Holy Spirit who has begun this good work in us. Not me, myself. I haven't started this good work. He has started this good work. Not us. And after Mike's sermon last week, um, I thought, you know what? This is really good. I've, I've, I've put this together and I think that might be quite good to go on a t-shirt or something. God at work. And we could all wear one of these t-shirts that says God at work, kind of acknowledging that, you know what, we are all a work in progress. We haven't reached the final destination. We, we still get things wrong, but you know what, we want to keep pressing on towards God. We want the work that has started in us to carry on until it is fully complete. So God at work, God at work in me, God at work in you, God is still at work in us. We also see that he talks about it being carried on to completion. So the good news is it will be complete one day. It's kind of like these sort of Builders that say, oh, yes, it'll take two weeks to build build that thing. And like eight months later, well, you're still waiting for it to finish. It, like the ne end never comes. And it can feel that way as a Christian sometimes. That you really love the end of all of this. You really love to reach the end, to reach the goal. Hooray! I'm finally like Jesus. But you know what? If you really think about it, that's not going to happen until we are made complete in him, until we are recreated, until the new heaven and the new earth comes. So that day will come. That day is coming. 
But that day is not yet. That day will be when Jesus returns. Then our growth of becoming like Christ will be complete. But we can have hope and faith that it will happen eventually. Paul says he is confident that we will be complete, that the transformation will happen. And not only that it will happen, but the work has been begun. So it means that transformation and change is already happening within the people he's writing the letter to and within us, because we are also followers of Jesus. So transformation is happening in us. It continues to happen even right now. Paul also says, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. And I love that word partnership. Uh, it brings ideas of, of togetherness, of fellowship, of ministering one to another. You know, elsewhere in the Bible, it describes the church as being the body of Christ. All these different parts formed and joined together to make a body. And you see, even there, the idea of growth is linked in, isn't it? Bodies, bodies grow. Healthy and alive bodies grow. Okay? Growth is linked not just with our relationship with Jesus, but it also is linked with our relationships to each other. And here we see some examples of that already being worked out in this letter that Paul is writing. Paul is writing a letter of encouragement to the church in Philippi. And you know what? He's encouraging. He realises there's a partnership. He realises that by encouraging them, they're going to grow. And likewise, he is growing because of what they are depositing in his life as well. It works both ways. This letter also mentions Paul is praying for them. And he knows that they are praying for him in return. We have a spiritual support going on here. He also talks about finances. Um, and we also know that later on in Philippians, we'll see that the whole reason for writing this letter is that um, they have supported him financially. Um, and that, so this is a letter of him saying, well, thanks so much for your financial support. But we can see here that material support is also being offered and given. And we can see that as they are doing life together, as they are being made more like Christ together through their relationship, that their relationship, that you know what, they thank God for their relationship with each other. Paul says he prays with great joy for them. And that just shows the strength of feeling of the relationship that Paul has with the, this group of believers and this group of believers has with Paul. So partnership in the gospel helps and aids us to grow. Partnership with each other helps us to grow. God is at work and he will see it to completion. He will see it through. And of this, we, just as Paul was, we can be certain. Amen.